Well, we were talking only last episode about what we were going to do with Guerrero, and uh, he's taken the decision out of our hands. He has fi- just announced that he will be retiring from football at the end of this season. So it becomes even more important that we bed in the new strikers so that we don't suffer when the next season rolls around. That being said, I don't plan on making it a case of Guerrero sitting on the bench from here on out. He's still a very important player for us, as evidenced by the fact that if we have a look at the last game, we actually won 1-0 thanks to uh, the goal of Guerrero. It was a scrappy goal where the uh, the ball was deflected in the area. Uh, Centurion didn't give up on it. He scampered to the uh, the touchline on the left-hand side, managed to pull the ball back, and Guerrero applied a very simple-looking finish. So very happy with, uh, with with the performance from the team in, during that game. We played very well. Probably deserved more than the 1-0 win, but uh, we got what we got. Uh, as far as today's game is concerned, we do have... Well, it's not today's game. It's a game that's going to take place in a couple of days against Manchester City. We're going to uh, refuse a transfer offer from Everton, which is strange because they just beat Arsenal 3-0. You'd think that they would hang on to their manager, but apparently not. Uh, Here is the opening day of the transfer window, and we should get the message that Jack Wilshere, in fact, we should get the cinematic of Jack Wilshere walking through and uh, sitting down, signing his contract. Well, there's the board telling us that they're very happy with the momentum of the team at the moment. We've had another bid for Joe Lolly. Oh, no, sorry, that's his contract. OK, so we've, uh, we're going to have a new contract for him, so that's good. Have a look at expiring player contracts. All players with expiring contracts want to sign extensions. That's good news. Let's go into negotiations. My team. And uh, right. So here's Lolly. He's requesting to renew his contract. That's lovely. Okay. So uh, he's currently on 14,040. He's proposing a weekly contract of 13,680. I'm perfectly happy to extend that contract. because it keeps a good player at the club. Everybody else's contracts are fine. Wilshire has uh, joined the team now, so you can see here that he's a member of the team. Looks like we're getting him just as he's about to uh, go off the boil ever so slightly. But uh, looking at those player skills, he's a, he's a good player to have on the books, despite his lack of speed and acceleration. Although it's not really that bad. Speed and acceleration, both of 70 He'll be, he'll be decent enough in the centre of midfield. And uh, Mbe So has rejoined the team after his uh, loan expired at uh, well, whichever club it was that we had him loaned out to. I've completely forgotten now. It's not like Football Manager where you can keep tabs on these things. Um, so with Mbe So back in the uh, the squad, we're, we're very happy to have him back. And it looks like he has improved a little bit since he was last with us. And he's just about to skyrocket in ability once again, he'll be hitting 75 by the time he's halfway through his 23rd year. So, all looking good. Uh, we've had a youth intake. Let's have a look at who we've got here. So, we've got Tom Heaton, uh, the English goalkeeper, rated at 71 on this game. Uh, Shown, Crisito, Lulic, Albiol, Ibora, Laurent Koscielny has uh, been regenerated and thrown into our youth team. Jan and Via. Mm, that's tempting. That's very tempting. Um, Ryan Babel. He's very good. Can play on the left and the right. Very quick. Carlos Tevez. Uh, let's actually order them by rating. There we go. Santi Cazorla. Now, there's a player that I would love to sign, but I've I've decided that now that we've got a little bit of money behind us, we don't really need to abuse the uh, the youth team system as we uh, we we once did. And despite the fact that he is an amazing looking player, oh, I'm really tempted to sign him. I I wanted to stay away from signing regens as much as possible, with with the exception, of course, of. Uh, 
abusing the transfer market and making some money off the back of them. But Santi is a lovely, lovely player. And I would very much like to have him in the team. Hmm. We'll leave him in the youth team for now. We can always bring him later. Right, so today's game, as I was saying, is going to be against uh, Manchester City, who are sitting top of the Premier League table at the moment. It's not going to be an easy game by any means, but uh, phew, let's see what we can do nonetheless. It's negotiations, I think we're probably just going to see that Joe Lolly has... Uh, oh no, we've had a transfer negotiation put in from Sheffield United. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but he's just signed a new contract. Um, so we're going to end those negotiations and we're going to hang on to him until the end of the season and see where we go from there. Next match, Manchester City. Let's have a look at who's going to be playing the game. So everyone's looking a little bit on the tired side now. Unfortunately for us, Kabayi has, uh, has got an injury. He'll be out for another week. So he's not going to be available for us. I'm going to throw Wilshire in onto the bench at the very least. I think Hadji can start. Uh, can he start? Or should we look at maybe bringing Malejo into the centre of midfield? Uh, no, we'll go with Hadji. Hadji's a very good player. He needs some game time. He deserves some game time. So we'll go with that. Uh, who else is looking a little bit knackered? Well, Willems is looking a little bit knackered. So let's give him a, uh, a little bit of a rest. And uh, let's throw Victor Malejo on for Joe Lolly to celebrate Lolly's new contract. We shall not play him. Uh, Samba is going to play in goal for us because Newball is uh, still not looking fantastic form-wise. And uh, although there are some players, mostly outfield players, I would say, uh, form is, is not as important as I originally thought it might be. Uh, what I would say is that goalkeepers are definitely one of those positions. You have very little p control over them uh, outside of when they have possession of the ball. And so I would rather pay more attention to form arrows where that is concerned. Looking at the Manchester City formation, it's a very familiar formation for us. Looks like Raheem Sterling has been demoted to midfield again. And with... Uh, Torres on the right hand side is a very attacking looking 3 5 2. Going to have to keep an eye on those flanks as we continue to play. Right, let's kick off. Uh, now, of course, Manchester City are one of the few teams that we actually had a really, really good record over uh, back when we were still playing on uh, the Superstar. Now that we're down to top player, Ironically enough, they might be a little bit more difficult for us. Uh, it's strange that it's easier to score on top player and it is easier to defend, but somehow teams score goals against me a fair, number, a fair amount of the time that I feel are almost completely undefendable. And that's not a uh, complaint, that's just more of an observation. As we kick off here and Rodri plays the ball to Ruben Diaz, and now Pepe, and they're just playing the ball across the back, just toying with us, looking to welcome us onto them before they put one over the top, just like that. But, uh, oh, Ribeiro, that's an awful, awful header. And they've got four in attack here with Ferran Torres. They're not winning our tackles very well here. As the ball takes deflection, goes behind for a corner. So we're going to have to defend this corner and be very aware of the fact that they could be playing a short one here. Bremer's going out. I'm not necessarily infused by the idea of one of our best headers of the ball running out of the penalty area. But Victor Malejo, lovely job coming back to uh, help us defend. And away we go. And Malejo and Centurion in tandem opening up this Man City defence. Arcas on the overlap. Can he do anything? Well, he puts a shot in on goal. It's on target. And the goalkeeper does a very good job of pouring it away with those giant sh shovels of his. The size of those hands. Surely it's cheating having hands that big in goal. Right, Yuri Ribeiro with a left-footed outswinging corner. We'll see whether we can hopefully get ahead on this one. Centurion at the near post does get up to it. Oh, he's put it in! My goodness me! Well, that's terrible defending by Manchester City. And a lovely take from Raul Centurion. We don't score from corners very often. 
We have done there. What awful, awful defending, but such a neat finish from the left winger. I suppose Raul Centurion has assisted his own goal there. Lovely finish. Man City are very quickly a goal to nil down here. Nobody was expecting that this early on as, oh, Malejo has the ball here. And now Guerrero back through to Malejo. Pull the cross for Guerrero. Oh, it's good defending by Pepe. Looks like a foul from Guerrero on Pepe. It will be a free kick to Manchester City. Just wonder if maybe Malejo could have played that ball across the face of goal to the awaiting Centurion on the left-hand side. City are going to have to butt their ideas up because this is so far a very, very poor performance. As they give the ball away in midfield very easily. Guerrero loses the ball there. He's just knocked off balance a little bit. And now here comes City. They're not very good in defence, but my, 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 they're good in attack. Ferran Torres. Oh, that's a lovely trick from Torres. He's got round his man anyway. And somehow, we get away with it. Now Rodri, tackled by Hadji. Not often you can say that. Arcas on the overlap again. Dinks it in. Nobody there. De Bruyne clears it out to Sterling. Malejo is busting a gut to try and get back there. Good to see. Ferran Torres not having the best of games so far despite that lovely trick to get past his man oh this is lovely from Forrest oh what a save beautiful passing football from Nottingham Forest tearing Manchester City apart here I don't think this City formation is really doing anything for them. And it's giving Forrest all kinds of space to fall into. As the ball comes out to Moise Keane and Busquets does a great job of mopping it up. Yuri Ribeiro out wide, plays the early cross in. Malayo underneath. And if only he was a better header of the ball. It's not like he's got the excuse that his hair got in the way. He is a cue ball headed centre forward of the likes we may never see again. Has a startling resemblance to Duncan Goodhue. Wonder if he can swim as well. As Alves clears the ball, Bremer's underneath it, Moise Keane challenging him, and uh, it's hard to say who got the best end of that. The referees decided that Keane was fouled. So it's going to be a free kick to Manchester City. 25 minutes gone. It's 1-0 to Nottingham Forest at the moment. Oh, come on, that's really a 50-50. I don't think anyone's at fault there. It's just coming together. See what Kevin De Bruyne can whisk up with his magic right boot. Well, not much. It's a short ball to Ballestero. And uh, Forest charge down the ball. And away they come again. Arcas on the break. Plays it up to Guerrero. Oh, through to Centurion. Can't get to it in time. Lovely hold up from Guerrero. Forrest are going to miss him. De Bruyne. Not seen enough of him today. Arcas tackles. Malejo over the top for Guerrero. Oh, he was looking to play it through to Centurion and it so nearly came off for him. Lovely, silky football. Why can't Forrest do this every week? They only seem able to do it against the big teams. Perhaps it's the extra space that big teams allow them. Ferran Torres. Over the top for Keane. Takes it down. Can't control it well enough. Goes out for a goal kick. 
36 minutes of the first half now gone. City looking no closer to that opening goal for their account that would bring them level with Forest. Oh, he's done him, Centurion. It's gone in. Guerrero set it up with a brilliant piece of sacrificial play and Centurion ghosts in behind him to the unattended ball and it was an agonising finish for City fans watching the ball roll across the line like that and eventually it collided with the other post and went in to double Nottingham Forest's lead. Look at this bit of play here from Guerrero. Held down the R2 button to try and spin on the ball and run in behind without taking a touch instead the two players collided and it opened up the opportunity for Centurion and uh, well he didn't need asking twice let's put it that way I think City are going to have to do something formation wise in the second half because right now the system that we're playing is having so much joy against theirs and this isn't even really anything to do with difficulty levels. This is just the fact that City are taking us too lightly and their system is not doing them any favours whatsoever. As Guerrero takes the ball, he's got Centurion ahead of him, plays him in. Lovely control by Centurion. Tries to go through two players. Oh, that is a cheeky effort from Guerrero he knew he had a free quick kick coming he took it quickly and he just shot on goal immediately and it was a stretching save by the goalkeeper kept them out right here's Ribeiro can they have more joy from the corner in swinger this time into Centurion who can't get his head to it Busquets picks the ball up plays it to Zafuik chipped over the top for Busquets took it down on his chest but he didn't have room to do anything with it after the fact and there's the half time whistle and Nottingham Forest go in with a very very well deserved 2-0 lead over a Manchester City side who well I think they need to take things a little bit more seriously and as well as that be a little bit more respectful of their opposition they've had chances they've not been able to take any of them Looking at that, it's actually been a very open game. We'll see how the second half plays out right now. And we'll keep an eye out and see if the formation of Manchester City changes. Moise Keane is off. Aguero is on. That certainly shows that City are taking us a bit more seriously now. As Victor Malejo picks up the ball in the left wing position. He's got Zafuik outside of him. Sorry, the right wing position, I should have said. And, uh, well, that's a poor pass by Malejo. He's given it away for a throw-in to Manchester City. Pepe, Ruben Diaz, Rodri, Tornatore, Ferran Torres. Through to Aguero, and this is where things could pick up for City. Oh, that's a good tackle by Bremelo. He's not having any of it. Sergio who? Can't underestimate or undervalue the energy that Hadji has brought to the Forest midfield today. Oh, that is very nice from Forest. Very nice indeed. Played over the top for Centurion. Ruben Diaz manages to head it as far as Malejo. Guerrero's managed to keep it in the possession of his team. Here's Zafuik crossed into the box. It's a poor cross. Let's have a look and see if City have changed their formation. No, they've not. They're still playing the same formation. Well, then you deserve everything that you get, frankly. 
as Busquets wins the ball really unimpeded in midfield. It's a freak. Oh, it's a teasing cross. Nobody able to get onto it. And, uh, well, that's an interesting clearance by the defender. It was going behind for a corner anyway, and he succeeded in uh, confirming the fact. Ribeiro, out swinger, Arcas near post, can't get to it. Aguero comes back to pick the ball up. Gives it to Gundogan. Now Pepe. And they had the chance of a break there, but they didn't take it. And this is a bit of a physical mismatch between Bremer and uh, Sergio Aguero. Here's Aguero, out to Ferran Torres. That's great from Bremer. Out of position, but never out of inspiration defensively. Oh, Guerrero's been beaten a little bit too easily there on the ball. Centurion, through to Guerrero, who has Diaz beaten. Guerrero's got a chance here to finish it off for Forrest. And he takes it. What a goal for a very unfancied pace man like Guerrero. But Diaz had less pace than he did. It gives me the idea that perhaps now that he's got his goal, it might be an idea to bring on a pacier striker up front and really try to put this side to the sword. Torres is off. And Jason is on. Press X to call Jason. Jason! Jason! And I am going to make that change. I'm very happy for Guerrero to get his goal, but I really want to try an absolute straight track bully like Niangbo in that centre forward position. I'm very interested to see how Manchester City are going to deal with him. We all love Guerrero here, don't get me wrong. But he is a fading star. And if Hernandez and Niangbo can couple Guerrero's teamwork ability with their physical attributes, well, we've got a couple of very, very good strikers. Here's Sterling. Holding off Malejo very nicely. City looking potent at 3-0 down certainly finding more passes now here's Kevin De Bruyne he's holding Busquets off oh what a tackle what a tackle I didn't tell him to do that Ribeiro buys himself a throw in would have preferred to get the, <laughs> the pass in myself but uh, there we go Hadji. Oh, Malejo, loads of space. Across to Niangbo. And he's got himself his goal. And it's 4-0 here to Nottingham Forest. What is going on in the City defence? I can't believe what I'm seeing here. This is the best team in England. And they're being absolutely hammered by Nottingham Forest, who are no slouches. But they're certainly not up to the level of league winners. Look at the space that Malejo's given there. And he cuts it back to Niangbo. Niangbo doesn't even have the perfect position to take the shot. And he still manages to beat the goalkeeper. Bottom left-hand corner. Well, we brought him on for his ability to be a bit of a straight track bully. And in the end, the Angbo has put away a very cultured finish into the bottom corner. And Manchester City, forget sixes and sevens. This team is at ones and twos. Forrest a first to every single ball here.
Well, City win it back finally. But then, I'm struggling to understand that ball at all. It's cheeky. Oh, Nyangbo, Centurions through. Oh, this is embarrassing for City now. It's a lovely through ball from Nyangbo. He used his size and strength to hold the ball up, then turned around and just played the simplest of balls through to Centurion, who very intelligently had moved inside off of the wing. And I don't want to say this is all too easy. But after the second goal, City are playing like a team that have already been defeated. Look, look at this from the Angbo. Oh my goodness me. And then Centurion with a simple finish. Plenty of R2 on that just to place it into the bottom corner. And the cheek of the lad to do it at the outside of the boot. Well, if you're not going to play your best team against us and if you're not going to adapt your formation, then you're going to get beaten. And this is a limitation of the manager, I think. And uh, of the game, if I'm honest, is that teams don't very often radically change their formation to play against you. And I know that I'm just as guilty of doing that. I very rarely change the formation that I play. But I'm not trying to be realistic. <laughs> Oh, Nyangbo, he's beating them all upside down. And there we go, there's the final score. It's a hat-trick for Raul Centurion and a goal apiece for Nyangbo and Guerrero. And listen to the boos. The boos are ringing out around the Etihad as Manchester City walk in after being absolutely tonked 5-0. Well, I'd love to sit there and just watch replays all day, but uh, if you were to look at those stats and not have the scoreline above, would you think that that was a 5-0 game? Because I don't think I would. Equal possession, decent number of shots for City, considering. We kept them very quiet in the second half, mind you. Good number of interceptions. Maybe not as many tackles as they'd like, but... 5-0. Well, I'm very, very happy. Raul Centurion, of course, only getting an 8.5 despite a 10 out of 10 performance. Nyangbo coming on for a 7. And we didn't even use any other substitutes. That Manchester City team are really going to have to do something, though. They're going to have to change their formations more against teams that find them out. Like, that formation is so easy to play against at this level as evidenced by the score. So there we go. Uh, Liverpool being held to a 0-0 draw by Leeds United. Fulham getting a 4-1 win against Burnley. That's very impressive. Wolves beating Arsenal 2-0. Well, I shouldn't be surprised, should I? And Chelsea beating Tottenham in one of the London derbies of the season. One goal to nil. So plenty of results there which contribute to this particular league table at the moment. Nottingham Forest have risen to fifth after what was a very, very impressive performance against the league leaders. Liverpool only a point behind Manchester City now. With Manchester United closing the gap to, to their City neighbours and Chelsea probably too far behind to worry about. But the interesting and uh, probably headline story right now is the fact that Nottingham Forest have just absolutely spanked Manchester City five goals to nil at the Etihad and they're up to fifth in the league with the potential for European football on offer next season. Right, well, I'm going to uh, play a few games off camera and we'll probably end up coming back for the... Well, actually, no, I can't do that, can I? We're going to have to come back for the, uh, the Emirates FA Cup match against Liverpool.
which apparently is taking place at Old Trafford. We then have a league game against them as well, which uh, I might play off camera. But uh, until tomorrow, when we will be playing in the FA Cup, thank you very much for watching. This has been quite a long episode, but I think you'll mostly agree with me that it was very much worth it. What a performance by Nottingham Forest today. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye.